Hello everybody and welcome back to I Was a Teenage Exocolonist, The Golden Run. For you it has been like two days, for me it has been all of two seconds. So now we're going to continue onward. Um, I have some plans. I want to do some babysitting. I want to do some engineering. And I also want to see if we can sneak out maybe one more time. Maybe towards the end. Just to get another friendship in with Deese. Because right now that's going to be the best way for us to do it. Until he actually starts talking to us. I mean, I guess I could give him some mushwood. It's not his favorite thing. But it's better than no gift, right? Um, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. We also need to try and grab some gifts for Mars. But I don't think... Maybe I can give her some cake? Uh, I know that Cal likes it, but I may have other ways to get friendship with Cal. Everyone's kind of on the same wavelength right now, except uh, Mars, who is the lowest, so I really need to work on that. Uh, but for now, we have people to talk to, so let's see. You tell Tangent you know where Deese has been going. You tell her he's been sneaking outside to explore the jungle. Not far away, but outside the walls. Tang looks concerned. Really? She says, wringing her hands. Is he... is it safe? Probably not. Or, no, I'll keep him safe. She eyes you skeptically. Full offense, Yabby, but you're just a kid, she replies. However, I suppose it's good to know he isn't alone out there. I'm there. We'll die together. <laughs> Two ten-year-olds. Tammy almost doesn't notice you as you approach. She's bent over a hollow palm, intently taking notes, until you get close enough that her ears wiggle and she looks up surprised. Oh, um, hello, Yabby, she greets you cheerfully. I'm sorry I didn't see you there. You ask her what she's studying, and she flushes pink and tugs on her ear. Oh, well, I'm not studying, she says. I'm making a list of my friend's favorite things. She laughs a little, embarrassed. And, well, you're my friend, Yabby, so what's your favorite color? Um, I hate all colors equally. No, um, I, IRL, I like purple. She notes your answer, then asks what your favorite dessert is. Uh, just because I know you like it, space cake. Tammy bounces in place. Yay, space cake is my favorite, too. Tammy carefully notes this as well. Okay, last question. What's your favorite toy? Hmm, dolls and action figures. Me too, she smiles. Okay, now I know what to get for your birthday. What are your favorite things? She presses her index fingers together shyly. Um, I like the color yellow and my dolls and my favorite sweet is cake. Good to know. I'll note that down. Speaking of cake... Do you want one, Mars? Uh, boop. Mars takes it from you without really looking at it. Thanks. All right. Fine. Whatever. Whatever. Oh, hey. You're looking for Cal in the garden when you nearly trip over someone else. One of the younger kids. And they're blindfolded? Hey, they exclaim, ripping the blindfold off of their face and throwing it to the ground. It's Cirrus, one of Anemone's brothers. He glares at you. I was almost done! Cal jogs over and grabs Cirrus in a friendly headlock, ruffling his messy hair. Dude, you were so close! Cirrus stamps his feet and complains that you got in his way. It's not their fault, Cal says. They didn't know we were playing a game. Give me a sec, I want to teach him how to play. Cal turns to you as Cirrus leaves. Sorry, Yabby, he says sheepishly. I was teaching Cirrus a new game, but he's more like a nemony than I thought. Real competitive, you know? He stoops to pick up the blindfold, brushing off the dirt. I've been trying to come up with different kinds of games other than sports ball, he says. No winners or losers. I just want to have fun with my friends. Cal looks at you hopefully. Do you want to learn how to play? Let me check my schedule. Uh, yes. Cal's smile looks like it's going to stretch right off his face. Radical, he shouts, jumping up and down with excitement. Okay, so first, put on this blindfold. The blindfold is a little scratchy and smells like dirt. You can feel Cal's big hands on your shoulders. I'm going to spin you around, and when I let go, you got to listen to my instructions. We're going to walk all the way to the cafeteria, okay? You nod. You can't see Cal's grin, but you hear it in his voice as he spins you around and counts to ten. One, two, three. First, Cal says, you got to walk for it ten steps. Do you follow Cal's instructions as best you can or make things difficult for him? Wait, you've done this before. In a dream or another life. You smile to yourself. Between Cal's instructions and your memory, you make it all the way to the cafeteria with no problem at all. Ta-da! Cal exclaims, throwing his arm wide. We made it! Good job, us! He pushes open the doors to the cafeteria. You know, he says, you're the first person who made it all the way to the end. We make a good team, Yabby. 
You celebrate your joint victory by ordering two glasses of potato juice and spend the rest of the afternoon brainstorming more games where there are no winners or losers. Cal is so impressed by how you somehow seem to know what he's thinking before he says it. I don't have- I have- no, don't- don't be impressed by it. Don't even think about it. I'm not from the future or anything. I am not trapped in a time loop. I'm not! <laughs> Um, thank you, T says, clearly unsure how to react. I'll, uh, find something to do with it. That's all I ask. <laughs> I'm gonna give everyone some sticks, because that's all I got. Oh! Wanna train together? On your way to the sports ball pitch, Anemone shares the story about the time her brother Calm once spiked the ball so hard that he broke Utopia's nose back when she used to play sports ball too. She describes it in gory detail. But don't go easy on me, she exclaims. That's why we have med beds, right? Plus, I might get a cool scar. She thumbs a blue-scaled scar on her jaw, right under her ear. Ooh! So then I trapped it in my room, Anemone yells, telling you about all the bugs she saw in her quarter. Its wings were as big as my hand, and it had feelers like, whoa! It was bouncing all over the place, like, boing, boing, boing! She gestures excitedly, swinging her arms over her head. The bugs are here are so big, and they're everywhere! I was gonna give it to Tang, she says. She loves gross bug stuff, but she said I should just let it go, because if it stung me, I might get weird mutant powers. I mean, more than the one I already have. And I wanted to see if I got more weird mutant powers, so I started jumping around off higher and higher things until I was jumping off the back of the ship and I got in so much trouble, but it wasn't even that high. She stops in her tracks. Hold on, she says, stooping to rub irritably at her knees for probably the hundredth time in the past five minutes. Oh, I'm gonna die. I busted my knees and it's so itchy when my scales grow in. Annie, don't pick at it. Chief Steward and Testament's voice rings out across the garrison yard, pleasant but firm. It instantly transports you back to being in the ship crash, tugging on her skirts and calling her auntie. Anemone jumps and stands up straight, her hands flying to her sides. But mom, Anemone whines, digging her fingers into her knees as Antecedent approaches you both. It's so scratched, it's quickly itchy! I know, lovely, Antecedent soothes her, patting down her riotous red hair. But the more you pick at it, the thicker your scales are going to grow in. Anemone tucks her hands under her armpits to keep from scratching. Maybe it would if I want to have cool scales, she pouts. Antecedent smiles indulgently. At the rate you're going, I'm sure you'll be covered in them before you know it. No need to rush. Anemone's skin is dotted with patches of protective blue-green scales that grow in whenever she gets a cut or a scrape. She rubs the patch on her jaw indignantly, the one she got when she ran headfirst into the food synthesizer back on the ship. Antecedent opens her satchel and pulls out a bundle of clothes. The queue for the nanoprinter is over a week long, so I patched your pants with scraps from your brother's clothing. Please try not to put any more holes in them, or yourself, okay? She hands the clothes to Anemone and kisses her on the forehead. Anemone sticks out her tongue and gags. Yuck! Anemone evaluates her clothes as her mom walks away. Galactic, she breathes, as she runs her fingers over the odd-colored patches. Then, right there in the middle of the yard, she unashamedly squirms out of her pants and pulls on the new ones. Wah! I look like a fighter jet from the hollow, she exclaims, showing off her new pants. Like when they'd stencil your kill count on the plane. Or like a really cool scar. Nemony grins. Yeah, you get it. My pants are scarred, just like me. I want scales. Ooh, want to study together? You and Tangent sink your hollow palms and play a game together where you race to assemble chemical compounds using a simple programming language. Tangent is a whiz at it, breezes through the levels barely breaking a sweat. You can tell she's hiding a smile when she looks over your shoulder to help you with a particularly tricky algorithm. I can't say that. Particularly tricky. There we go. Particularly tricky. Okay, I can't do that. But we're, we're doing pretty good on keeping up with everyone. Everyone's in the tens now. I mean, if we manage to get at least 10 friendship a, a year with everyone, then that would mean that we get 100 by the end. I mean, that's not counting Nomi and Rex and Vase, who I don't know how they're going to get into this equation, but for now, we're doing pretty good at keeping up with everyone. All right, let's register for engineering. Using Congruence's Holonet scheduling system is almost a test on its own. You feel like a hacker navigating the confusing interface, but manage to add your name to the list of drop-in students. You're now eligible to join Tangent and some of the older students in engineering classes. Let's get right into it, then. Study Engineering. Professor Hal rubs his hands together as he waits for the class to settle down. He's in a great mood. This must be his favorite subject to teach. 
If biology and chemistry are the wet sciences, then engineering must be a dry one. But believe me, this class definitely won't be dry. He winks. It's weird. We'll also be learning math, physics, computing, robotics, architecture, and astronomy. Tangent raises her hand. Will we also be learning about nuclear engineering? She asks. Professor Hal nods. Yes, at a beginner level. We'll have an overview of atomic theory and take a field trip to the engine rooms to learn how our ship's nuclear reactor works to power the colony. Nice. I love field trips. Even if the field trips at my elementary school were really weird. I have a very vivid memory of one time we walked to a store that was local to our town. We walked there. We didn't take a bus or anything. We walked there. And then we took a tour of the, the store and we bought some potato wedges and then we went back to school. I don't understand why we took that field trip. I don't remember why. I just know that we did and I don't understand. <gasps> Deese! Do you want to pick up groceries and buy some potato wedges? Deese is sitting in the grass near the big gates that lead out to the jungle. He's just staring out into nothingness and picking absentmindedly at the weeds. He pretends not to notice you as you approach. Sit down with him. He shifts uncomfortably as you sit, but doesn't say anything. You both just hang out, saying and doing nothing. You stare out at the big gates. The grass in the colony is trimmed short by garden bots, but out there it's wild and as high as your waist. Head surveyor Tonin is prepping his equipment for an outing. He's bringing a lot. Maybe he's going to stay out overnight. You're starting to wonder if Deese will ever acknowledge you when he says, Uh, I've gotta go. As he starts down the hill, he pauses and says, This is a good spot. I'll probably come back here tomorrow. The friendship is blossoming! Alright, and I don't... Oh, I could actually... I could do deliveries too, and this will get us friendship with Mars. Apply to deliver supplies. Chief Administrator Seek greets you at the depot. They look you up and down. Hmm, Yabby, yeah, you never struck me as a particularly responsible or organized, but children never are. What makes you think you are a good fit for the position of courier? You didn't realize there was going to be a job interview. The truth is, the game was rigged from the start. <laughs> I can carry a lot? Strong for your age, maybe. But luckily for you, you're the only applicant this week. You've got the job, for now anyway. They use their elegant stylus to note this on their holopom. Come back in a few minutes and you can help make deliveries. Yes, there will be kudos in it for you if you do it correctly. I'm shocked considering how stingy you are. Let's start right now. Seek sends you all around the colony delivering supplies. During your first week, it's mostly small things you can carry by hand or push on a little cart. Stuff like tools and electronics. Some are high priority, which means you have to move fast. It's fun getting to yell, important delivery coming through, and people actually get out of the way. I love when people move. I'm important, not you. I'm the main character. See? Three stars. Even the game agrees. And we got friendship with Mars. And some kudos. The good thing about us doing the Golden Run is that since we're going to be saving Uticot, it means we don't have to worry about uh, bribing Seek because Uticot's going to yell at them. And we love that. We stand Uticot for that. Let's see. 11, 11, 6, 11. Alright, I'm going to give Mars a stick. You want stick? Have stick. Oh no! Shit! Oh god! <laughs> Don't give Mars stick. Don't give Mars a stick. Alright, well, let's see. Tammy, Tangent, and Anemone are all at 11, so let's do stuff with them. We'll worry about Mars later. We're gonna get one of those crystals, hopefully, in dark, and that's when we can start giving her gifts she'll actually like. Uh, and when the depot opens, I can probably buy some stuff, but money's a little tight right now. We'll worry about that later. Let's do some babysitting. Hello, Yabby. Auntie Seedan greets you. Oh, sweetheart, I'm so happy you've come back to help. You know this place well. The creche, part preschool, part all-day daycare. You practically grew up here, cared for communally while your parents worked their shifts. A few kids even live in the creche full-time. In a way, antecedent, a.k.a. antecedent, a.k.a. Annie, and, I can't read, is every kid's mom. The smell of craft glue and clean blankets gives you a calming sense memory all of all the happy time you spent here with your friends. Tammy is here too, gently rocking a drowsing baby against her chest. She looks at ease here in a way you don't usually see. 
You're going to babysit too? She asks in an excited stage whisper. You'll love it. Suddenly, a bundle of wild hair and pink overalls runs straight into you, nearly knocking you over. Almost more kitten than kid, this child grabs your leg and stares up at you with unblinking green eyes. Watch that one, Auntie Antecedent warns. You remember Nougat? She's turning out to be quite the handful. Why don't you start off by getting her to go down for her nap? Hmm. Let's remake some crafts with her. As you find the finger paints and wait for the crush's nano printer to warm up and print some fresh sheets of blank paper, Nougat gets bored and slips away. Nougat makes a beeline for some older kids who are playing with the Creato bot. She charges in to pick up the bot and hug it, causing it to flail and whir and knock both her and itself over. By the time you get to the scene of the crime, there are tears, and the other kids are upset about their broken bot. The commotion attracts the attention of Antecedent, who swoops in with hugs and tissues. Within minutes, she has it under control. Whoops, she says, hauling Nougat up onto her hip with ease. Just a little mix-up. Don't worry, everyone. Gabby will get that bot fixed in a jiffy. She winks at you with a smile. Daw. She just is too good. Oh! What the? You're having a terrifyingly familiar dream. A monster crashing through the walls, unfathomably large, every part of it wriggling and moving and searching for something. It tramples through the colony as you watch helplessly. Time shifts to the wreckage of your home. You're picking through it, looking for something. Tears streaking down your dust-covered face as you lift heavy pieces of debris, searching. You wake up shouting, no, but your voice is drowned out by a deafening rumble from the skies outside. Oh, the rain. I thought I was worried. I thought I forgot to save Tonin. <laughs> the bedroom window is covered in water. It's pouring out down from the clouds. You guess this must be rain, but you've never experienced it before. There's a bright flash from outside, then another crack and rumble. Thunder. It must be a thunderstorm. It's still the early hours of the morning. You've already almost forgotten your bad dream, but you're too unsettled to go back to sleep yet. The rain beats down on the roof of your quarters, joined now and then with great peals of thunder, like the footsteps of an angry beast. Run outside and play in the rain! It's surprisingly warm outside, and the water feels nice hitting your head. Everything smells fresh and damp and wonderful, and the dusty-packed ground has turned to squelchy mud between your toes. You don't go too far from the door to your quarters, but it's exciting being outside in the dark watching dramatic streaks of lightning arc down the hills behind the colony. I love rain. Rain is the best smell in the world, and it feels so nice. All right, and it looks like Tangent wants to talk to us. Tangent is watching the construction crew build scaffolding for the new engineering pavilion. They're using mush wood, which is so light that one person can easily lift a 10-meter-long pole and stack it into place. She points you towards them. Human beings are so great, don't you think? Before we landed, this was all just dirty jungle. Now it's civilization. It's not dirty. I've been learning about adaptability and writing in biology class. The book says it's what sets us apart from the animals. Like we don't need fur because we can make warm clothes. And if it's too hot, we can make air conditioners instead. Maybe the animals have need ad 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 adaptations. Tangent rolls her eyes. Maybe. But even if they do, I haven't seen any sign of intelligent life here. It's just those big dumb xenofauna. Some animals are here are smart and friendly. Tangent looks skeptical. They're still animals, Yabby. Maybe they're just pretending to be nice so you'll feed them. You're lucky it didn't eat you. She folds her arms. Dwarfs moth look cute, but one can eat through a bag of rice in less than 30 minutes. Even an herbivore can be dangerous here. It doesn't have to want to eat you to be able to hurt you. Together you watch as the foreman puts the blueprints for the scaffolding onto the floating screen of her hollow palm and raises it to the scaffolding to check their progress. I'd like to see an alien do that, Tang says primly. Humans look defenseless and weak, but we're the strongest species in the galaxy. Who else can literally bend reality to their will? Not a stupid alien, that's for sure. She puts one finger to her chin. I'm living proof that humanity is greater than our biology, she says. All of us are, really, with our genetic enhancements. We're the next step in humanity's evolution from great ape to galactic super species. Just wait until you meet the gardeners. That'll be a bit of a shock. Sports ball! You've paired with Nougat in practice. You make the mistake of underestimating her and she wipes the pitch with you. Good. Nougat deserves it. She is an adorable little sweetheart. You definitely got enough bravery for the danger that lies ahead now, which is good. Very good. Alright. 
12, 12, 12, 12. Sorry, Mars, and 11. All right, we'll do engineering and then we'll do another delivery thing so we get more Mars friendship and then we'll be ready. Um, or should we do life sciences? We don't have much biology at all. Let's do life sciences. I already have a pretty good amount of engineering. Good afternoon, my burgeoning biologists and up-and-coming chemists. Professor Hell welcomes you back to your old classroom. This afternoon, we'll learn what I like to call the wet sciences. He gestures to his holoprojected lesson plan. Biology, chemistry, medicine, ecology, and geology. You'll learn a little bit of everything with opportunities for further study in your favorite field. Big brain Hal, you will live today and tomorrow and in the future. There we go. Ooh, the days have been getting shorter, with only the yellow sun barely skimming the horizon. One morning, you wake up in the darkness and have to check your hollow palm to know what time it is. You see a hollow stream from Mars. Good morning to all my pals, if you can even call it morning. They call, named it glow season because, like, everything is crazy glowing out there in the dark. I'm staying the heck inside for the next month. What is the point of even going out if you can't see anything? It's going to be a long, boring month. No way, it looks cool out there. You peek out the window. The wormhole is the biggest you've ever seen it, like a massive, fiery ring in the sky. The planet must be very close to it now. And out in the jungle, something new is taking place. The plants are flowering, glowing, iridescent blooms, and everything is full of life. There are strange new sounds, long hooting calls and gurgling roars. After Mars's message is a notice from the council warning everyone to stay safe inside. Tammy's dad and the other surveyors have been called back and the gates closed for the month. There's a tension in the air, as if everyone is waiting for something. I wonder. All right, let's do a, a, a quick scan. I need to find those crystals for Mars so she'll stop being mad at me. It was just a stick, Mars. <laughs> Deliver supplies. Oh, it's been a while, but it's time to attend a meeting of the Secret Fun Times Club. Mars started the SFC years ago when you were little kids. Tangent and Tammy agreed to join at the time, but then you got all busy with other things and forgot about it. What with the wormhole and the crash and learning how to survive on a new planet and all, you meet in an unused conference room in command, which Mars says is perfect for a secret club. Club President Mars brings the meeting to order. Tang, Vice President of Writing Down Secrets, records the meeting notes on her hollow palm, while Tammy, Vice President of Tea and Snacks, passes out with Tato juice in little cups. As Vice President of Fun Ideas, it was your job to come up with something for the club to do today. You chose making friendship bracelets and brought all the supplies you'll need. Today, Mars announces, we're gonna make friendship bracelets, and I have an even better idea. We're gonna sell them to people for kudos. Tammy puts her hand up shyly, as if she's in class. I, um, I don't think we're supposed to trade our kudos for things except at the depot, Tammy says nervously. We're only supposed to give them to people to say thank you. Uh, I'm gonna do this one just because I need friendship with Mars. Sorry, Tammy. Tangent's right. We'll be rich. Well, Mars suggests, then we give our brace uh, bracelets to people. And if they don't say thanks with some kudos, we take them back. It's hard to argue with her sheer force of will sometimes. If there's a loophole, Mars will find it. The four of you spend the afternoon braiding bracelets out of recycled bits of wire and bright plastic packing straps. Tangent dutifully counts each one on her hollow palm while Mars motivates you to work harder and faster. She promises two kudos to whoever makes the most bracelets. Tammy is already way out ahead, but I'm gonna let her win. Tammy's deft fingers have practiced this so many times she doesn't even need to look at her work. She's a bracelet weaving expert. Her color choices are a bit random though, resulting in questionable combinations like olive green and hot pink. Mars takes all the bracelets at the end of the day. After I sell these, she says, I'll put the kudos in the club treasury. Meeting adjourned. You ask Tangent and Tammy if they think Mars is actually going to sell them. I think so, Tang tells you, but the club doesn't even have a treasury. She'll probably just keep the kudos for herself. She doesn't even seem to care. <laughs> That's fine. They're for us, then. Here we go! The endless glow of the dark of glow season must be getting to you. All week you've been having nightmares. Something is coming. Something bad is about to happen. A dreadful mantra repeats in your head. You're hardly even surprised when the emergency sirens start up. You peek out the gates. Yes, they should be closed, but they're open. Just as you dreamed or remembered. But the details are foggy. There were monsters. The closest assembly point is the children's crush, but from the opposite direction you hear shouting and loud popping noises. Gunfire! Is the colony under attack? Help fight! <laughs> 
You'll try your best to be brave and fight back. First you dodge some helpful grown-ups who point you back to the crash, then you head outside to get your bearings. You can hear yelling coming from upstairs to command and a commotion to the southeast at Geophonics where your parents are working. I'm going to Geophonics. Your parents are defending the greenhouses from a pack of knee-high creatures, which seem to have eyes growing all over their bodies. Their oily flesh ripples with a constant, subtle motion as the individual eyes blink one at a time incessantly. You can't tell them which end is which with these horrible things. This feels familiar. Cal is standing nearby, wide-eyed. He slowly picks up a shovel and moves beside you. He reluctantly holds the shovel in front of himself like a weapon. Easy, doggies, he whispers. We don't want to hurt you. Get out of here, both of you, run, your mom shouts, attracting the pack's attention. In a flash of remembering, you lock eyes on one of the creatures. You've done this before. You know it's frightened, you know it's going to attack, and you know what to do. Hmm. Facing the eye beast, that can get us a card. Um, oh, but we have Empathy 10, so we can do that. I don't want to fight it, so let's sue the beast. You shout, don't look in their eyes, and cover your face with your hands. You hear the eye beast lunge toward you, then stop. Cal whimpers beside you as it sniffs your shirt and paws at the ground. Your heart is beating so hard, but you stand still. You aren't sure you could run if you wanted to. Then slowly, the pack filters out of the greenhouse. You peek through your fingers. It's as if they're anxiously looking for something. Cal and your parents are incredibly relieved. You hear another crack of gunfire from the other side of the colony, then silence. After two weeks of darkness with the blue sun barely skimming the horizon, it begins to move higher in the sky, and daytime returns. The council admits they don't know how the gates were opened or how the creatures got in. Some of the attacking creatures were once thought to be docile. Others were species nobody had seen before. It was like something had driven them to assault the colony. At least nobody was killed this time. Whew. Dang, I was hoping that we could... I forgot that you get so stressed. Alright, we're gonna have to relax. Maybe we can hug our dad. Oh, we might be able to. We'll see. But that's going to have to wait for next time. We're starting year two, and I'm going to be recording that right after this one. But that's the last one I'm recording in bulk, so make sure to give me all of your advice and what you want to see in the comments down below of this one, the last one, and the next one. I'll be looking at all of them and being prepared for the next part of season- episode- season? What? Year two. <laughs> uh, I don't know how much I'm going to record of year two. I guess we'll see when I do it in literally like a minute from now. Um, but either way, let me know what you want. And we will just keep on going. I think we're going pretty good. I mean, we could do with some more combat, but I never really use combat. Perception's gonna go up pretty fast once we start going outside more. Everything else seems to be going pretty good, and our friendship is going pretty good with everyone except Mars. Well, hers is starting to rise up, too. Once I give her her favorite gift, we should be good. Um, but we're working on it. As long as we can keep up with it, we should be good. We have some time before the others show up, too. We'll, we'll figure out a strategy. Um, so, until then... Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Remember to take care of yourself, don't look in the eyes of the eye beast, and have a good day.